some stuff to do. First of all, I'm going to have a look at this weed. Not sure what to do about this yet. These are the Swedes that I sowed a while back in a 24 cell tray. I just threw a few seeds in each cell and by the look of it they all come up. Now normally I'd uh, sell, sow them in one seed per cell and uh, plant them out till that but they've gone a bit leggy for my liking so I don't know what to do and do sowing in a smaller cell tray. Because I do like to plant out the seedlings as plugs. I might pot a few of these up but I think I'm going to do another sowing as well. Right then, I've got a little cell tray here, there's uh, 30 cells in there, just put the label on, put a little depression in the top, so let's get on with the sewing. Uh, so all the cells filled in, just covered the soil up and I'll just give them a, a good drink now. It's the 1st of June, we still haven't done our beach yet so better get cracking haven't we? Okay this is a 32 cell Haxnix red trainer which I always sell my beans in, sweet peas and stuff like that. So first of all I'll start off by Put an hole in about an inch deep or 25 millimetres, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll just pop one bean in each and now for the best. These are the beans from uh, Will Cows. Climbing bean, blue lake. Great value for money for a pound. These are the beans here. Look just like Tic Tacs. <laughs> So there we have four all 32 cell trays planted up with one bean. Cover the top of the cell. There's a little sort off there. And that's it, sit back and wait now. Next up is the runner beans and we've got Scarlet Emperor coming up this time. Again these will be done in a 32 cell Haxnix root trainer. I've already budged a few holes in, so I'll just put one seed in, cover them up and give them a watering. Probably the final job for today will be uh, prepping me final carrot tank. Um, I've dug the soil over, that's a nice and crumbly mixture there. I'll add a bit of blood fish and bone and also some charge and then I'll do me usual grid marking and sow the seeds. And then some charge. With all the mixture sorted, the only thing left now is to get a nice level surface and the best thing I'll find is one of these, an old brick lane trail and it's quite easy to get a, a reasonably smooth and level surface across there. It's a long, laborious job, but it does save an awful lot on the thinning out. So that's all them sound now. All I did is get a, a compost, run it through the sieve, add a bit of vermiculite, then cover it up. Gentle spray water, and put them to bed for a few weeks. And there we have it.
That's just a bit of protection out of the top until they start to germinate. Well, it's been quite a productive day today. We've got, got a lot done. There's, there's a couple of things I forgot to film, actually. I potted on uh, seven cauliflowers and five summer cabbages into three-inch pots. That got done as well. So, all in all, a good day. I've had enough for today now. I'm going in, have something to eat. So, we'll see what tomorrow brings. All in all, I think we're out and about today with it being half term, so I'm not sure what jobs I'll be doing in the allotment. However, I did uh, knock a little list up a bit earlier on. I'll just take you through the things we've got to do and what's outstanding. First of all, there we've got the bench, we've got that to finish. The, uh, the frame has been blacked and the wood's been stained, it's just a matter of belting it together. I think I might have to open the owls up a bit on the frame. Next, we've got to uh, move the aces into the garden. Then we're in the greenhouse on the allotment at the moment. I need to move those out to create a bit of space, which will then bring in number three. Plant up the tomatoes and cucumbers. They're waiting to go out, they're already flowering in here in the greenhouse in small pots. Uh, moving on, we've got the sweet corn that needs planting out. The bed's covered up for that, really, so I'll just take the cover off, give it a lot of rake, a bit of blood fish and bone, and should be able to plant that straight out. Then, moving down, wool baskets plant. Yeah, I've still got two wool baskets to plant, which are on the side of the conservatory. The four big baskets they've been planted up with begonias already, and they're they really coming on really well. Uh, next is uh, thin parsnips. Parsnips are just producing the true leaves now, so it, I think now, or round about now, I can really tell which ones I want to keep, the ones I want to get rid of. So I'll be going on there a bit later on with the scissors and trimming them. Next one is fit, uh, fit to invite. Yes, the, you saw me earlier on making the couple of more frames. Well, I need to staple some Enviro mesh on them then. I can put them into action and uh, adjust net. All oh, right, adjust the net on the cherry tree. The the cherry tree on the allotment. I've got a net over it, where it's not secured very well, and there's gaps in it. The pigeons are stripping the cherries like there's now tomorrow. So I need to sort that out. The garden auto watering yet? Right. Um, you saw it in the last video. I'd, I'd replace four fence panels in the garden or well, during that process to get some of the old stumps of trees out in there I had to cut the ring main of the watering which goes all the way around the garden so that needs joining up that's another thing what needs to sort out and the last one on the list is stow the peas earth green shaft right of uh, actually got them soaking already in the tub so I suppose that's a good one to start off with. These are the gutters for the peas. I won't bore you with sowing them again, you've seen me do them all before. But uh, that's the bucket there which I cropped the um, swift early potatoes out of. So I'll, I'll use that soil back in there to sow the peas and we'll get another use out of it. Oh, there we go. Two gutters ready now, labelled up. We might on the plot next door as well in all different colour weeks. So I'm looking after the greenhouse. So I think I'll pop the troughs in there for a week just to warm them up a bit. on the way down to open up the gate. You may recall in the last incident where the one of the guys on the, on the plot had the, his car whipped from under his nose. Well, the good news is he's got it back and there's no damage. I haven't spoke to him yet, but uh, I'm not sure if he did or he didn't get all his keys back. Anyway, we'll find out a bit later on. One job I did like yesterday was to thin out the parsnips. 
you'll notice in some of the tubes there's still a couple of seedlings and I'm not sure which one to take out yet I'll obviously pick the strongest as I get a bit bigger but uh, I did remove the others by cutting the seedlings off at soil level rather than pulling them out and risk disturbing the root of the one I want to keep That's the easy part done, getting the ices out. The hard part now is trying to clean this up. <laughs> I'm struggling a bit for room for panties to fair now. Find somewhere for the cores yet. So I've got this tub, I'll just quick show you quickly. This is an old kitchen waste bin I've found and uh, what I'll do, I'll just make sure there's holes in the bottom. And I've got multi-purpose compost there. A bit of 6x manure some fish blood and bone and then into the planting hole I'll add a few sprinkles of some Eco Thrive Charge I've managed to find a temporary arm for the courgette box in between the two carrot boxes here's the courgette as you can see three inch pot still plenty of fruits on so it's got to go into its arm now eventually this will probably move somewhere down the block because I don't need spilling over into the carrots and spoiling them in the meantime I'll set this off and add a bit of charge before I put it in. You may not recognise this now as it is, but if you cast your mind back 12 months, this was the big basket where I had the giant tumbling tom tomatoes in. So I'm going to clear it out now, and I've got a three dying to get out of these three inch pots. Them, them like <laughs> screaming, let me out! <laughs> I've just realised I haven't fed the worms for about a week, so I've got a bit of kitchen scraps. I'll chop that up and uh, I'll break some of the compost up from the old hanging basket from the, what the tomatoes are in. I like that. That's that chopped up now. I'm going to have some uh, coffee grounds. It's all mixed up with the soil from out the hanging basket as well. We'll just go and have a look now, see what's happening in the bin. Because I've got a bag in there of shredded paper, which I add a bit later on when I've added water to it. I don't know if there'll be many worms there today because it's quite warm. It's 32 degrees in the greenhouse, which is in the 90s. I'll push that back. This is the bag where I've got me shredded paper and anything to do. There we go guys, what do you think of that? There's a few in there. Okay, let's give them the dinner. They're all trying to get away now because the sun's breaking them, so I'll do this as quick as I can and get them back under cover. Absolutely lots of little babies here, look at them. I think they like it in here. It's a shredded newspaper in the bucket full of water while they're now gather out, squeeze it and just put it into the worms. I'm going to call it a day for this one because uh, otherwise it'll turn into an epic. There's quite a lot going on at the moment so I might be putting two videos up a week for the next week or two. 
In the next episode, we'll be looking at uh, planting up the hanging basket with the tumbling tom tomatoes in. And also then we'll be getting into the greenhouse and getting all the other tomatoes planted out into the border. And so until then, I'll see you later. And bye for now.